Well, you got a chance to learn from one of the best ruckuses in the game from Rubu. That was Ryan Wong. A little bit of a uh, play like a pro series that we've started, and you're going to see more of Team Envy coming up soon in these weeks, and you'll see new teams. So make sure to tell us what you're interested in wanting to know. Maybe a champion you're interested in highlighting. We might have done it, or we might do it soon. Just a heads up before that one. Well, back for more PCL. Nick? Let's get a How to Play Vivian. How to Play one Vivian. Of the guys. Yeah. Or you and Gore can just throw that audio you guys have of that I moment. Will, I'll put up the audio if we, if we get the tips from okay. uh, one of our console guys. Gotcha, gotcha. That's some, a promise. That's true. We should maybe <laughs> do a console. You know, maybe when they're over in land, they can give us some uh, some specifics on uh, some of their champions. There are oh, some, yeah. you know, maybe a Talus or a Vivian or something like that. I'm very excited about it. But some of the PPL has no idea how to play. <laughs> no idea. Yeah, they can learn a few things from console. That's true. That That's absolutely true. Let's, let's talk about this matchup. We've got Bust Down versus Viral coming up soon. These guys, where we look at this entirety of the Xbox EU scene, uh, there's been a myriad of changes throughout the, the kind of the, I don't get the cornucopia of teams that have jumped in and out of yeah. this uh, of this scene. You know, viral. Where do they stand as far as making their kind of? I, I guess right now the bottom stake in it, in in this in this league. And and part of it comes down to. In the past, each one of these region console variants, or divisions, I guess we could call them, has had a king, right? Right. Vex has been the king, or was the king, for this region, and they were like that G2. Number one, undefeated, undefeated, always, always, always at land, but never putting it together there. So that team splinters, and really it's a lot of those guys that get kind of dusted around the region, which is a lot of where the talent was front-loaded, and now it's sort of spread out, and now you get this, uh, this sort of fight for that spot, fight in the middle, fight near the top as well, one of the more competitive regions. Because there is no just clear-cut front runner, right. Viral got, uh, I believe, one of these guys uh, from Vex, or no, Bust Down got one of the guys from Vex, so it's a part of putting it together, and these are kind of more of the rookie teams for this division, so... It's a big part of what we talked about earlier. You only really get to qualify out at the top spot. So what you're trying to do in this 3-4 position is win and be in the 3 position because if you fall to that 4th position, you mathematically count yourself out of land very, very quickly, even uh, with a 13-week phase. That's unfortunate here. I mean, looking at Bust Down as well, I mean, do you give them the kind of the edge in this matchup going into yeah. it? We all, we all did. On, on Esports Weekly last week, everybody kind of voted this way. Just because it's so rookie when you look at Viral, right? We just know a little bit more about these bust down guys, and we've seen what they can do, and we know what they can achieve. So right. a little bit for me, yeah, I am leaning that way. It'll be interesting to see how this matchup shakes as well. Uh, could it be a wild card? Not exactly sure, but he's definitely been doing his thing on uh, the DPS side of things. Maybe he'll give us that how to play Vivian as well. Triple kills on Ice Mines, you know, the overall sentiment of these teams is that, and, and from what I've seen in console today, is that things can shift in these sets. You know, despite coming in with the confidence that one team will do better than another, it, it sometimes it depends on how they take those fights on a day or how coordinated oh, yeah. they are. You know, I think that's one thing that we're still seeing the scene develop in is when you really have a chance to go from pro league on Thursday, Friday to console on Monday, the decision making and the timing of that decision making is really the difference there, you know, but that's, what's so crazy about the premier league is that even at that level, we saw so many teams with sub outperform expectations, right? To an incredible level. I'm specifically really looking at the renegades who just kind of blew us away. And we're like, wow. I mean, look at these guys, right. Can come together and that's have true. such an incredible performance and Ooh. guys that historically have been better than them. will look look like chumps compared to that type of play. So that's what you're really looking for is, is to not give up, realize how long these splits are, and just look at the top level, look at what's happening there and, and the way these guys are coming together and playing as a squad and a unit to show that that practice and preparation can pl can pay off even against great odds. Okay, well, we've seen a lot of Vivian here, and, and a lot of these these shifts are uh, and bans have been uh, kind of different than what we've seen in the PC realm with a lot of prioritization on the Cassie specifically that we've seen very little of in console have today. You if you're friends? a viewer of watching all of our sets, uh, you'll see that there are these differences mm -hmm. in the draft based on console. These hit scan preferences going very it's highly, red. especially considering the top I pick Vivian. So dead. the Grok early on as well for Viral, Without seeing the, the Ruckus, without the seeing the Inara, is this too early or is this... What do you Console think about this? Console just likes it, man. They just love to, to pick their stuff. I think in general, Console great. movement is not as erratic as PC movement can be at sure. times. What? The so left right will yeah. have a little bit more of the viability there. All tracking champions are just more effective on console, and that is part of why we see Grok 
be so Spirit. effective. Um, more better lashes. tracking means more cooldown, means more shock pulses, yada, 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 more of the same. Um, he wasn't really picked at all last night. He was banned That's once. True. That's banners. true. I never looked at, so I think it varies, you know, person to person. Also, do you grok Inara to ward off, uh, sorry, do you grok Makoa to ward off the Inara from bust down? Maybe you're trying Try to say, don't run. pick this up, because obviously <laughs> the grok will be much better for it. They still go for the barrack, which is a strong thing, but you're running out of front lines to be able to pick in that situation. <laughs> now they open themselves up to an Inara if they want as a last pick, which would be a very strong point tank with Makoa as the aggressive tank here, Nick. And, are unwanted, and it seems like that's stranger. what they've actually gone for. And Vivian is one of those characters that when she gets to that spot, it feels like an even a Nara, right, is going to crumble pretty quickly. We see the Knessa come through as well, which is not exactly standard for console, but something no. you, you definitely love to see. And it's one of those just very mechanical champions, Pounds. You got your Victor's Vivs, you got your Strix and Knessas, and it's all up to the player to be successful. Well, let's see if they can make it happen. It, it happened again, though, for Dave. He gets his favorite map on his first set casting. So let's send it to him. Let's send it to me. To me, we go on Frog Isle, the best map possibly to go to. Game number one, it is a great game number one for sure. Alongside me here for set number two is Gore. Gore, good to have you next week. Yeah, I mean, one day we're going to have to buy you a ticket <laughs> to go see Frog right. Isle in real life. In real life, yeah. And, you know, we're going to have to track it down. I feel like, you know, a lot of the ruins have been uh, maybe misplaced. I'm, right. I'm going to take a bet based on some of the archaeology, probably somewhere in South America, probably That's somewhere fair. hidden down there. So maybe not too expensive a ticket. Don't know if they have an airport in Frog Isle, but we'll find a way. There's certainly a statue of a frog with water coming out of it somewhere. <laughs> there has to be. There has to be. What Petition happened? for right. our new background while casting to be the Frog Island statue. I'm sure Just tear would, all this down. That would, pass, that would pass enough signatures almost immediately. <laughs> What's happening in the meantime, though, is bust down off to an early 60% lead here, and there's just been a lot of skirmishing off to the side. Khan finds himself one as well as the Leon, but it's really just been that, that right side skirmish that started everything off, and there was just no answer back from, from Team Viral, and Bust Down find themselves in control. Viral's able to answer back with the Inara, but the offensive power is coming back here from Bust Down. And now Inara kind of locked, isolated on her own, doing whatever she can to stay alive. But unfortunately, you can only stay around for so long before getting taken down. And that's kind of the way Viral have been fighting. It right. feels like they, they come in, they have that presence, but they just haven't been able to push back. And I feel like there's a lot of it that is maybe unsung, partially sung, depending on how the kill count is going or the kill thread. And it is all this Knessa, whether or not she's being able to hit those shots. I mean, it's why she's one of the more prioritized champions here on a map like this. And yet again, Aryavan finds Leon on the backside. Whitey drops Slaya as well, and Viro is just firmly that. on the back foot right now. They are just not doing anything to really push back at the moment. And I think it's less them not doing anything to push back, and Bust Down just has such a high powered offense right now. And the Knessa, the Sarah, I mean, you see the streaks up top as well. Yeah. There's just, just not a moment to breathe for them. And the best thing I saw out of yeah, all wow. of that, honestly, like, the streak's going really high, the shots, the pressure's really good. Aryavan pops that ult goes for the headhunter, and then immediately Inara's like, I'm just going to stand behind this rock. You Red. cannot shoot me if I'm back here. And so Aryavan gets aggressive, jumps in, and tries to do whatever she can to find that shot. And that's one of my favorite things. The Carbine with Kinesa, not really the best weapon on its own, but the Carbine with Kinesa with headhunter is yeah. going to shred yeah. people. Oh, it's helpful when you can get a Dread Serpent onto her. That buys you a little bit of space. And the Tempest coming out as well, trying to find some damage, but instead he finds some damage onto himself instead. No kills coming out on the backside just yet for Viral, but there are some low health bars. But Yui on the barrack doing a great job of turning things around, at least for the moment. Trades himself out for the Makoa on the backside as well. So Viral finds himself some space, finds themselves a bit of a defense here, but the Inara dropping right now is not going to be helpful, especially now with Aryavan coming back onto this Knesset. And just trying to do whatever they can. Up on the tree. Oh and getting the peaks you need. Unfortunately, there's going to be the shield, but the Headhunter pop not going to be able to find the kill right there. But you lock down Grok, you lock down Makoa, you keep them completely on track. I mean, is it... I mean, Leon is the... She is the counter, in this case, to Kness. I mean, is that really... Is that what Viral need to lean on? The Leon finding Kness on the backside? Is that is that the answer here? 
I mean, that's definitely going to help him out, but it's just one of those things, the range thing specifically. Kinesa's going to be able to hit you harder from further away more consistently right. if you're delaying. So you can't really take it as a range battle. You have to be able to go around and potentially try and find the flank. Right. Force Kinesa into like that awkward area where it's like, okay, I'm either going to 2x zoom on your head when you're <laughs> 10 feet away from me, right. or I'm going to have to fight you with, again, the carbine that doesn't admittedly do anywhere near as much. 24 shots over time, it can do a lot, but... It's just not going to be able to clean you up the same way Delane could if he gets into the back line. So I'm thinking Five, Yumeta four, and Delane need to go around the side two, together and attempt to hold it. But unfortunately, you're going to be met with probably Yui and Whitey on that ramp. So it's it's just going to be very difficult to take. You know, it's interesting. I mean, maybe it's not even so much finding the Kinesa. I mean, her and, and the Barrack are the only two who have actually found deaths this time. It's the other three who are on their streaks right now. Wildcard on the Vivian finding lots of kills. They need to find an answer for her as well because they haven't been able to thus far, and that continues. A clean three, four make it zero to start off as well, and then Whitey on the con. I mean, they just, it's not even so much the Knesset, it's everyone else. Just a casual 17 streak. Just doesn't even matter. Being able to stand and push forward the way that this Vivian is. Like, no one's threatening her. I mean, Makoa goes into this, and this is one of the worst things with an Ancient Raid. You have oh. your dash available, but you're not ready to dash into them for your Ancient right. Rage to get its, its full value. And you don't have your hook when you pop it, so you don't have the way to pull that Vivian right back into your shots. And so everyone just kind of walks away. Finally, oh, they get rid nice. of Wildcard. That is a nice convergence, but is there any follow-up damage? Not at least at the moment. Instead, it's coming out on the opposite side. They do clean up one on the back side of it, but Saris going to be the next one to fall here. Overtime's ticking away, but at least for the moment, Viral have found themselves the take back. Wait, Saris, Dreams actually stays alive. I guess not ends up getting chased down, but Wildcard has since respawned on the backside and found two on the side of Vivian. That was a clean fight there from Viral. Just lasted too long and the response came in. You know, Team Viral have now given me the word of the day. Right. The word of the day, well, I guess maybe it's two words. It's tunnel vision. That's what Inara just had. Yeah. Inara went past the point, running up the ramp around the corner to chase down a Ceres, who then just drops down, goes to the ghost walk, and walks it off. And then immediately Slaya dies. Like, that is one of the textbook moments of when you should stop was about 20 seconds before you finally right. did, and the only reason you truly stopped was because you died for it. You need to be able to kind of take a precaution, I guess, against that. Recognize, am I chasing this kill because we need it, or am I chasing this right. kill because I want it? And, and that long tunnel vision chase allowed the rest of Bust Down to respawn get back into the fight, Wildcard finds two, they find the point, and now they're 10% of the way there from pushing it in, making it a clean 4-0 here on Frog <laughs> Island. They're just zoning out in the base. He does trade his life out for it. Just a, I don't know, BM maybe, just showing off a little bit, getting up in their face, letting them know. Lane doing the best that he can to transform some damage back onto the side of Bust Down, and he's able to do so. So at least for the moment, Viral find themselves some space Barrack, the one who's really holding things down here, looking to clean him up, and they do just that. So I've never done this because, you know, why would you? But I'm looking at this Vivian. I see the Sentinels popped. She runs up against the wall. And when you are on, I don't think you can walk through that when you sure. are on the opposing team, right? I think you have right. to be pulled through by an ability like the overpower that we've seen in the past. So in my eyes, she walks in, she bonks her head, but the Sentinels hitbox goes in enough that it destroyed both her Sentinels. She didn't have that damage anymore. Like, that was such a big self-bait. <laughs> it was a self-bait that cost her life, but did not cost to bust down the game. It was only a matter of time, really. The just uh, the first couple teams just <laughs> doinked her head right on the wall and destroyed her Sentinels. <laughs> bust down, find themselves a clean 4-0 win, though, on Frog Isle, and yeah. Viral just didn't really have an answer. It's also entirely possible they were just shooting through the door, and now that I'm thinking about right. it, that seems probably way more likely, but I like the idea of bonking your head and sending your Sentinels into certain death. No, I think they just got scared, destroyed themselves. They were too close to the other <laughs> They're team. They're like, no, 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 I'm out. We can't win too hard. Well, is there any takeaway here for Viral? Anything that you look at that you can grasp onto? They just need to play better. Focus, well, I mean, focus yeah. on the draft. Yeah. There was a lot there. Like, Knessa got away for free. Like, right. there was almost no pressure on Aryavan, and when you were finally able to get that, it was more just because Bust Down were so far ahead that they got a little right. cocky, maybe pushed the fight a little too hard, so right. it is what it well, is. Well, Bust Down grabbed themselves a win here in game number one. Let's send it back to the desk.
Well, Bust Down did not bust this time around. They actually succeed in grabbing the victory and uh, with the Knessa as well, Nick. So they definitely took it to uh, what seemed to be maybe more of a difficult lineup with an aggressive Makoa in, in the potential on the paper, but right. it just didn't really work out. I mean, really, Area Van wasn't pressured much in that game. Comes down to not a lot of flankers are played on console and seem very comfortable with that Knessa on Frog Eye. Let's be honest. Yeah. Good job. A lot of confident Knessas will move from that little door and the little walls to just bunny hopping, and they'll rotate around almost to the stage side mm. when they're feeling more confident. And Definitely. once that fight starts to go their team's way, they can stay involved in the fight, because that's a big part about playing a sniper is getting that initial pick, but then you have to stay involved in the fight, because then it's like you just died as well if you yeah. just get the pick and sit there and kind of look at your watch and wait for that respawn. To yeah, come back. and I mean, you know, is so good at, uh, you know, being a not only a damage dealer, but sometimes being the thing that everyone's focusing on and, and, and yeah. grabbing your attention. Because you know if you leave her alone, things are about to get very, very bad for your team. And that really opens up the Vivian, which is where she's a champion that if she has space to maneuver, her over. damage is just, it's it's over. You can't survive. <laughs> so they worked off really nicely with one another. Yeah. I wonder how we're going to see Bust Down continue in this draft to keep getting advantages like that. Or if we'll see Viral maybe make some adjustments. And if they were, what, what would that look like? Was, it, was the ban phase a little awkward? Was it too early of a Grok? Maybe have been uh, the Grok was a, a bit awkward and just overall like the play didn't feel up to, to standard. I don't have a ton of problems with the champions that were selected. It was just like it felt like Bust Down were the better team there. When it's right. costing you Ancient Rage and Tempest to get from your Frog Isle spawn back to the point, that's yeah. a problem. That is like you don't have any money left to try and, and win this team fight. 0-11 on the Makoa as well. That's an incredibly powerful pick. Yeah, that's that too bad. That can't go 0-11. No, it can't. I mean, you can't first pick and go 0-11. That, that's basically a better call right there. But I think the Makoa was tasked with a very difficult thing to do, and Area Van seemed to have, you know, really have uh, his number there as well. But so did Whitey, and that's the thing. Really, it all kind of tilted towards this way. Whitey goes 11-1. He just wins the frontline battle again and again and again. Han's been kind of a beast today, not gonna lie. I mean, he is that running a ton of ammo as well. Almost, the, I think the max you can get is 40. He's sitting at 34 yeah, right now. Yeah, he's got some extra ammo. So, you know, hit scan tank, really, really strong on console. They played really well. Like the Barrack Vivian, I saw it was during that thing that I was complaining about the Ancient Rage and Tempest to try and get back to the point. They threw a dome shield down for Vivian to just sit under and kind of yeah. do her thing. And at that point, it's like we said, even Anara is going to crumble fairly quickly to that. Yeah, and that's the thing. They had a lot of champions that could buy time even when they got aggressed on. Knessa could reposition, and that was like, okay, well, now I've, I've, I've wasted everything to get to you. Now I have no way to keep up with you. Uh, shadow travel from the Saras. You've got Vivian throws the shield up, and maybe that just buys a couple extra seconds, but it's enough for Saras to get off a heal and now keep the Vivian alive. That, that fight starts to shift towards Vivian's favor the longer it goes on. So... All of these things didn't really work for Viral. Now they have first pick. Now it's their map. We'll see if they can make some adjustments here. We'd certainly like to see that as uh, they have their first ban on the table. It's going to be a Talus again, so really wary of that Talus to start out. And he's been a pretty scary champion. Last season, I, I it really hasn't made it through enough to be scary. It felt fine last set when we saw it on Bright Marsh. Yeah. Uh, but it wasn't like this, you need to instant ban it. These guys know each other, though, and they know, I think, the, the champion preferences of the guys sitting across from them. And even in game number two, we're starting to see those bans evolve a little bit to be what frustrated us in game number one, not necessarily what the meta would have us dictating our bans. Well, there it is. The Vivian ban right out viral. Just saying, get out of here. Uh, we don't want to play against Get it. It was too incoming. good. It gave you too much pressure, or you were able to create too much pressure for it. Either way, they do not want it in this draft. So Victor will be the first pick, and Bust Down can respond with two. It's not going to be a Grok con, I would imagine, but maybe. We'll see. I think they're going to go con, and then Inara the just get their front lines the locked in. I like it. It is Jaguar Fall, so I think a little bit more uh, weight can definitely be placed on Inara. Uh, like I was saying in the first set, and we saw one of these in the PPL, like they're, they're these walls on Jaguar Falls, if you catch a team kind of rotating, you can get yourself 20% on the objective the yeah. if you wall off a team effectively you like that. So blocking off Victor, it's going to be important for the lines of sights. I think Khan and Nara is a good way to start. Saris Makoa, certainly a good way to respond. So yeah, I think the Makoa worked, but it, it, it's it's risky. Gotta be better on it. King yeah, I mean, it's not a bad pick. It's, it's not just, a bad. You gotta be better on it's it. It's not a bad pick, but it's the same matchup. They didn't really work. Maybe it's why do you just knows how to maneuver around the Makoa too well? The Khan does get Makoa out of that shell shield, which is what the Makoa will 
kind of count on to give him that room I to heal up. The Genos here in the BK Stay now throwing Viral me. into a bit of a interesting position because they could be facing a kind of a very dangerous damage amp composition. This is, yeah, either they want to go for a little more niche something something here. Time's I would ticking. love a tire there. Whoa! Would, Tyra, I thought, would have been a really good way to go there for sure. It's either they want to go for a damage amp thing or just neither of these supports are comfortable with Maldamba at that point, right? When you see a second pick Saris, you're, yeah. you're kind of starting to tilt your head a little bit. No league, no division really places that high of value on suppo any support, really, right. except for Grover. Right. Well, Viral. Bust down, two different lineups. We've got the Genos coming in. We've also got a Sky. That's always interesting to watch. It's Jaguar Falls. Let's send it to Dave and Gore to get ready for game two here. See if Bust Down can increase their lead. Bust Down looking to make it a 2 0 here on Jaguar Falls. And Sky, the champion, I think, to look at here. Aryavan, certainly a seasoned Sky player, looking to make it work here, make it 2 to 0 for him. It's so awkward to me because I have to remind myself how good Sky can be, yeah. like in, in certain scenarios. And like that's the thing is I, I have to do like a mental reset every time I see <laughs> right. Sky because like she actually does a ton of damage and when played properly can do a ton for your team. But I always forget that because she can get so heavily punished as well that you have to ride that line. It's such a thin line. But a Luminary Genos behind it means that the damage from Arya Van, if played properly, is going to be nuts. He's trying to face tank a Victor right now and actually doing a pretty good job of it. The Poison Bolt's really chunking away on Victor. He's low on the backside. He's got a low Mako as well. They get some healing from Saris, but what it means in the meantime is that Wildcard can find himself too and start this thing off on the right foot here for Bust Down, and they're just going to zone them out here. 72% in climbing for Bust Down. Wildcard rolling on the Bomb King. Off to a hot start as Bust Down. And good control. I mean, they separate the team. They lock them down individually. Slay is going to be able to walk away with his life. But unfortunately for Viral, they're not walking away with a point. Right. They get zoned <laughs> out so hard early on. And the thing you could see at the very beginning of it was exactly how much damage this guy can do. You have that Luminary on top. Didn't you get the Poison Bolts? And, I mean, you're doing percent damage right. and you're chunking on top of it. Like, there's just no chance of standing and feeling good against this. I think... I think he hit the victor with three, like all three of the poison bolts, and he was down to like a quarter health after about half a second. Down to zero health right now as Bust Down is actually zoning them back pretty far into their base right now. The payload hasn't even caught up with them just yet. Finding <laughs> one is Aryavan going down on the back side, but Inara cleans up the ash as well. So a bit of a trade back and forth here. Bust Down looking to get it pushed through in a handy manner. They certainly have a team comp that can do it. Getting Nether Grasp is the Makoa. No follow-up damage at the moment. And they just have a Nara that's literally walling Viral back into their base, and they're not really able to get out here. She's zoning the Makoa out from doing anything in this fight. The Ancient Rage will be up soon. The Time Bomb is going to get some damage out, able to duck behind the wall. No kills on the back side of it. Instead, Aryavon actually falls, but Whitey cleans up Ash on the back side. So he has got to be careful here. Makoa's going low. He does drop as well. You meta as well on the Victor doing some things, answering back with a couple kills now for Viral, but Bust Down is on the front foot, and they're well on their way to a second point. Being able to grab that push and maybe a couple of kills after the timer goes down. People always react like I'm crazy when I say Makoa could be handled, because a good Makoa is very difficult to take down, right? That's true. But Slaya there was a good example of what it looks like to be handled as Makoa. Like, you get stunned out, you get forced into your shield, like, you're not getting your damage down, you can't hook, there's no setup, like, you're just always being pushed into these bad scenarios for you, right. and because of which you can't help your team. You can't do anything with that pressure that you should be getting. Of course, it also helps if you're able to stop any sort of pressure from Bust Down, but unfortunately, you have three Undying members, and while the two that have died are going to be their carries, and they have the five deaths total, Red. it doesn't feel like it's getting them a lot of time. I mean, Aryavan's died three times, and I can't actually think of a time where I felt like his presence still wasn't being felt. Right, and, and a lot of it was on the... It was, well, it's like... It, it's because it's on the backside of him doing a lot of damage. The banner comes slamming down here from the Ash, but... Bomb King's just going to get himself out there, actually getting walled. That's unfortunate. Tully on the ash. Here comes the King Bomb looking for an answer, and they find one onto the Makoa. He's going to drop to start things off here. Wild card on this Bomb King, doing just as well as he was on the Vivian. Delane answering back with one onto Kana as well. Wild card cleaning up another one for himself. So bust down. 
really rolling here. Wildcard doing a great job. And Viral need to find an answer for this Bomb King. I could watch Wildcard play Bomb King all day. Like, I'm, I'm set up. He's getting a quadra kill. Like, he's hitting these shots. They're so clean. They're so crisp. I could, again, I love Bomb King. So maybe it's a little skewed for me. But I could Rick. just watch a good Bomb King play all day. And if Wildcard could just keep this up, I'm set. The, the rest of this set's going to be fine as long as he's just doing this. Well, Wildcard, I mean, you saw him on the Vivian last game doing huge oh, things. You see him on the Bomb King this game doing huge things. Viral don't, not not even just the Bomb King, they just don't have an answer for Wildcard right now. He's playing so well. Trying to find some pressure now is Slaya on this Makoa. He's not able to do so. The Ancient Rage runs out. His health is getting healed up a little bit from the Saris, but he is low. If they choose to pressure it, he could be in some trouble. Yumeta instead finding one onto Aryavan, so a little bit of space there, but we've seen this in the past where Viral finds themselves a little bit of space and then bust down, find a way to just extend the fight, flip it on its head, and then push it through. But this is the furthest back we've seen bust down. And doing whatever they can, this is another perfect scenario for <laughs> really for wild card. I mean, he doesn't even need the King Bomb, but I'd like to see it, just to see it come right. through. Gonna have two kills right there, looking to find a third as Tully's gonna go down. And I mean, they're just gonna be able to walk this forward. Not too much of a resistance. This is going to be, can you break through this choke point fast right. enough that no one on viral can really stop you? Right. They have a minute and a half to do it. Figure they got more than a fighting chance. And if it's not the Bomb King, you'll let the Genos do it. He finds two with the through time and space to start off the fight. Just a moment ago, Aryavan finding two this time for himself. The time bomb comes out. Ash has got to be careful. Is she able to duck around the corner? She is. So she avoids the damage. But in the meantime, on the backside, Whitey drops a couple on the con as well. And it's just one or the other. I mean, pick one of the five that you want to die to on bust down right now because that's about the only choice they have in the matter. Aryavan cleans up Makoa, Delane drops as well. And now it's just a bit of zoning presence. Victor gets melted by Aryavan there. Saris next up on the menu. That's a sleeping ash, and that's a payload now. Getting pushed through for bust down, finding themselves, well, almost, unless the Makoa has something to say about it. He doesn't. I, I mean, <laughs> he even doesn't. if he had something to say, I think bust down might have just ignored it. I feel right. like they put their earplugs in. They were like, anything that Viral has to say here, is not, it's going to fall right. on deaf ears. There was no chance of pressure, and it was really downhill once Sky got around and was just right. waiting outside their base. Well, no answer yet from Viral. Best down is firing on all cylinders. Let's send it back on the guys to, guys to the desk, guys at the desk to break it down. Thanks, Dave. Appreciate it, man. Well, that game was over before it started, it feels like. The sky definitely yeah. worked, and uh, there seems to be no stopping uh, bust down right now. They have so much momentum in these fights. I mean, it's really, crazy. really good crazy. control. They just felt like they were walking wherever they wanted to be. Bomb King, incredible performance as well, having a couple of like a little quadra kill in there for the boys. That's just something that it really gets rolling, and it's no pun intended on the King, but he really has a good time. On Don't you pun the King. I won't. That's I wouldn't dare. <laughs> I'm glad we uh, established those subject. ground rules. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now you're, now you're crossing the line here. Wild card was phenomenal, though. We will say that. But it was really, you know, there's so many things that came <laughs> to it. Damage. Uh, the Dreams era, Genos with the pocket luminary, that was also <laughs> extremely impactful. You know, the Inara staying alive so long, it helps to get a lot of damage that way. Whitey again, only one death. That's that's 15 and one, essentially, or 16 and one in two games as far as his KD. Uh, and, uh, you know, Slaya taking over the Makoa from Tuli or Tully and still going one and six. So clearly it's not about who's playing it in the frontline role. It's just about going up against bust down front lines. They're going, uh, they're running away with this one a little bit. Try to get fancy with the footwork there. Ash side steps it. But so much burst damage. There was one Illuminate picked up, but again, it's so much happening at the same time. This fight is being attacked all at the same time. The front yeah. line is going in as Bomb King is causing havoc, and Sky just kind of slips in in the chaos and, and finds so much value. And it does feel like five really good players, too, because what happens is there's just so much pressure on every every side. Every single DPS has to be considered, you know, Sky or Bomb King. They're both about to get quadra kills if you don't deal with them. Right. But then you're leaving Whitey running around by himself on the con. I mean, it's unstoppable what they're doing. Steam's definitely showing up today, and I like them putting their foot down on this set. For sure. Be interesting to see what happens in this next one, though, because the drafts have been good. It feels like um, Viral have tried to do some 
not weird stuff, but they've tried to make significant adjustments as far as their pick ban and their first couple of picks right. uh, in these last two sets. So I wonder where they'll settle on in game three to really give them the advantage and, and, and where we'll go for maps. And normally that's fine. Um, and that's actually something that I definitely advise for a team that's struggling. Like you got to kind of change gears. But at the same time, it busts down our, our picking pretty significantly different stuff as well. So it's like it's almost that only works. The changes are only working if it's in a vacuum, right? Yeah. If you have your control group established, yeah. but it's not really the case here. And bust down are kind of being adaptable as well and showing that we can win with different stuff in different places. And that's what's scary. I, I, I say a lot of times when you grab the first two in these best of fives, you have a, a pretty solid chance, especially when they're both four O's like yeah. that, of, of kind of just finishing off the job. Yeah. And I mean, it, it, it to also, it's the mental game of it where now I got to win three in a row. I mean, this team just four O'd us two maps in a row. And the only way for us to win the set is to win three games in a row seems like a tall task but stone keep is always a good map to change the pace change the map structure for sure and give yourself a little bit of an opportunity we could see a drogos come out here they've got to do something different we don't know what it is though the talus has been banned three games in a row and so is the torvald so do bans shift here for either team well bust down have the option now a lot of uh, powerful front lines have okay. been making it through and that seems to be good for bust down, right? So sure. maybe if you're yeah. viral, you, you try and get the con or something of the like taken away. Uh, but the hit scan boys, the Victor, the Vivian, have the been the first pick choose. undisputed. If I'm viral here, I think I grab, I think I grab like a con Makoa. Yeah, I, why why wouldn't you? They've been you pretty consistent with the Inara here. plus the con though, or oh, the Saris front line here. for the stand Yay. standpoint. But they are they're gonna yes. Saris. Oh yeah. boy, oh boy, oh boy. Yeah, no, you, I don't think you can. I don't think you can pull that off. I think there's too much, too many power picks open right now uh, to be placing that type of. In, it's, it feels like a comfort thing, right? It feels like I can't play Maldamba, so I have it's to do me this, right? It's like it's not. <laughs> the, Saris doesn't carry games. Very few supports really carry games, and so I, I, I don't know. I think that's a big mistake. And it just may show just the limited, limited nature of the. The, the talent pool right now. Uh, the one thing that does, they do have it going for them, but bust down, eliminate that factor on their side as well, is that when you get your support out of the way, now these next three picks can be maybe a little more surprising. You could flex a DPS hell. towards the end of the draft. You could flex a front line towards the end of the draft, although that's less impressive. I think you grab Neil. your secondary front line here. No. So I guess the, the, you could say, are we going triple DPS? They still don't have that secured. In which case, Saris is also a bad pick. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure. Still, yeah, it's, I still don't love it there. And uh, Oh, boy. Maybe getting fancy here with the Moji. Fancy with the footwork, huh? There's a lot um, to sort of help that out. Like, you can get a Grok Totem. You can get a Tempest. <laughs> it could be really funny to watch a, a Tempest, you know, fuel Emoji team <laughs> fight here. So, uh, at this point, I, I think Bustown are just feeling that good. They're going to go solo support Grok. Wow. Um, Moji brings... a. Uh, Slightly more hybridedness in yeah. the support category. If you if if we're still running two, it's been Let's so long on console. Down. Whoa! I don't really know what they're looking for, and, and maybe viral. Looking My to eyes match are watering. Spice with spice. I don't know what's happening here. My allergies are kicking the in at, after looking at this draft. What is going on? <sighs> we're gonna find out. Yeah. I I don't have much analysis for this, Nick. I think Bust Down are just getting to the point where they're so confident they can feel they can rock the MOVG. Willow is good on this map, so I'm not saying it's a throw in the towel -y type of pick for Viral, but we'll have to see how it works. We certainly will as we head down to Stone Keep for Game 3. Bust Down, Viral. Casters, take it away. Keep it is, and Gore, my mouth is on fire. There's too much spice in these two teams right now. You need to eat more spicy food. It'll help tone that down. No, no. but you're, you're absolutely right. Maybe you might be smelling... You know, a scent of flower coming mm -hmm. from the I willow. Do. I do. And whatever magic smells like or dragons <laughs> from from Moji. Either way, Bright I'm actually metal. interested because you were surprised with this. And I don't yeah. think because you've never seen Moji play. I've never seen Moji in my entire life. And so this is interesting to me because this is like kind of like a callback to an old meta, I guess, right. for console. Like I told you that Moji was essentially just Ruckus Jr. That's how right. most people played her. And I'm wondering if the changes to her that were actually made very recently are going to make her play maybe slightly differently. So far, it seems to be kind of the same to me. Well, burning down totally does Dream's era. Aryavan feeling just as confident on this Moji as he has been the rest of the set here. Burning away at the Inara. She's going to be the last one to fall here for Viral and Bust Down. Not wasting a moment. A minute into this game and 50% already here on the point. All right, I'm going to call it. I want to see the loadout. Let's see what he's running. 
So Scurry, not too surprising, using Scamper heals you over its duration. Scoot, as well as Fluffy. Like, there's actually a lot of cards in here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna admit to this live on broadcast. I right. stole from Nick's loadout at one point. But it's really the symbiotic, it's using Scurry, it's using these cards kind of in tandem that keeps right. you alive. You have something that grants you immunity, you have this dash that is going to be able to come through. And, and with all of that, I mean, being hit while you're Magic Barry, like you're just, this is, I'm gonna stay alive the build. Right, right. And he's that doing was that. kind of scatterbrained, but that's what it is. No, he's, I mean, <laughs> he's the one on the five streak right now. He's making his presence felt on this Moji, certainly something what did Nick say? The year is 2017. It is 2019, though, and Moji is in your games. This is not a rebroadcast. Aryavan finally dropping on the Moji. Duffman finds himself a kill on that Saris. That was an early pick, Saris. So finding some presence with that is certainly going to be good here for Team Viral. Wildcard's got to be careful. This is the third different champion he's played this set as well. Found the Vivian success. Found some success last game as well, and now he's on the victor. Bust down off to just as hot a start as they have been the rest of the set. Just based on the way it's been said, now you can have the new team's old meta 2019 <laughs> Paladins console lead. In a world where <laughs> Moji is picked. And Aryavan dropping again. Bust down here, though. I mean, they got a minute and a half. They got the ultimates that they need. Team Viral has some ultimates to find on defense as well, but... And we've seen this time and time again, I think, in this set, where Bust Down finds just one pick, just finds a little bit of space, and they convert that into an overwhelming pressure that usually ends up in the round being over. This is such an interesting matchup to me. Right. I like that Viral have gone for a Willow here, because I'm very much back to what Nick said. This is a great map for Willow, but she was... Rel I mean, she's just been silent, right? right? Not a lot of changes that have been made to her. She still does a ton of good damage. Seedling is Ooh. where you're going to find a lot, but I mean, her shots are nothing to be scoffed at, but right. it's always dead zone. That is the number one reason that she's been kind of hanging around. It's just that, that again, inherent anti-heal to be able to bring it in. Right. When a lot of champions don't have that anymore, or when you are able to come through and provide that extra burst damage, when you're able to find those kills, the zone, the control, like, she is, for all intents and purposes, a great champion right. that I, I would equate to, like, Androxus. She's not in the meta, but she's undervalued. Right. She's definitely making her presence felt. We have to initially hear Viro putting up a great defense right now, and, you know, Moji, Aryavan found some pressure early on on the champion, ended up falling a few times here, not finding the same success, at least as he was at the beginning of this round. So Viral, good job by them finding that pressure, finding this good defensive stand. About 10 seconds left, still plenty of time for bust down on the opposite side, though. Slaya doing a lot of tanking right now. Out comes the crossfire from the Tyra. She's going low as well, and she does end up dropping. So three down now on the side of Viral and bust down find the right time to explode, and they are doing just that, trying to push Viral back into their base. Saris and Willow are the last two alive, but they're not going to be able to do anything about it. And after what, what was a pretty much dead push, yeah. Viral doing a great job of keeping them pushed back. Again, bust down, find one or two kills, and convert that into a push. And, and I mean, it went literally from nothing's happening, nothing's happening, nothing's happening. Right. Okay, now everybody on Viral is dead. <laughs> like, it just, like, it just out of nowhere, Bust Down just flipped the switch, and they come on through. A lot of that will be pressure from Whitey being able to find the kills on the side. Yui right. doing a lot, being able to stay alive through that entire round, but also Wild Card. There was a barrage where Whitey kind of pushed them onto the stairs, barrage comes down on the stairs, and there's nowhere that you can feel safe. And you get rid of the first two immediately. Is that an Inara That's spray? Inara as her wall. <laughs> I can't before. remember the name of that one. I use a. I, I'm a big purveyor of the Gurk spray. I don't actually know if they're available anymore. They were very bad MS Paint sprays for Paladins. They're great. Oh, I'm losing it. I've never seen that before. That's hilarious. It's not going to matter. Arya Von finds two. Viral certainly on the back foot here. Willow looking to find some pressure, but not going to be able to do that. Arya Von, so the Moji. Starting off hot last round, falling a little bit flat towards the mid, the end. And starting off really hot again here. Ultimate down, not available just yet, but all they're looking for right now is a little bit of zone. They got 57% here on the point. So much damage. Team Viral's all bunched up right now, just eating the Moji Flame. And Yumeta trying to do his best to answer back with some damage of his own, but this three-man zone here is a lot to deal with. You gotta watch out for Yumeta, though. The Grok is standing on the point, trying to heal up through it. Not going to matter, though, on the back end. 93% here for Bust Down. And now Moji forced to go back. But Moji, admittedly, if you're going to send anyone to stand on the point under all of this duress, it's probably going to be Moji. Going to be able there to find go. the kills <laughs> and with the immunity, going to be able to stand on the point like it's nothing. Unfortunately, 
they end up leaving. I think it was Barrick all alone. So no one was able to come save that objective, but they still pick it up. What'd you call her? Ruckus Jr.? Ruckus Jr. <laughs> It was like kind of a Fernando Jr. as well. You got the just it's ever actually so. Flamespit. I guess it's time for everyone to know. I know. It's Ruckus's and Fernando's adopted child. That's why she she learned right. a little bit of the magic, a little bit of the goblin ways. That's why right. she's so short. I say adopted, and I don't know why I'm giving her traits from the two parents. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> but it was learned traits. She learned to be that short from Ruckus, and she learned about the fire from Fernando. It's, it's good, clean family fun that way. If we just call it adoption, <laughs> Duff Man. Queens up wild card on the back end. This is where Viral found some success last time as well, but fell just about 10 seconds short on the defense. They need to find something here. I mean, it's 3-0. You're down 2-0 in the maps. I mean, this could potentially end your week number four. Getting up and aggressive is this Willow back in the keep, trying to find some zoning and doing a good job of it. And you see time and time again, this Willow just hits a few shots, and you pointed this out. I mean, she does good damage. I mean, her yeah. auto attacks do a good amount of damage. And bust down, yet again, unable to break through this initial viral defense. I honestly think it's just that in very certain scenarios, on very certain maps, Willow will break through. And simultaneously, the same thing is true otherwise. On certain maps, she just won't do anything. Bright Marsh and Stone Keep are very good maps for her just because she's able to get up in the air using her ult. She's able to kind of rain hellfire from above. Right. But if you are a team that's coordinated enough, she's going to get picked off. She's right. not going to be able to kind of sustain that as much. Very similar to where you'd maybe pick a Drogo's, but without having all of the great things about the Drogo's. Sure. Well, bust down, finding themselves some space here on defense. They're pushed pretty far back from the payload. Arya Vaughn taking that Leon head on and coming out on top, finding himself the kill. And Nara is going to be the next one in their sights, and she is going to be the next one to fall here. Team Viral down two, spawning out here, though, so not entirely staggered as of yet, but this is the same exact spot we saw bust down in the end of last game. There were about 10 seconds left. They were on this same exact choke point, and they were able to find the kill. So look for maybe more of the same here. Going very low, Aryavon. That's not going to help your opportunity to push here. The Willow finding her presence up top. Delane dropping wild card as well. So you'd think that's going to be a successful defense, and it is. So Viral converting, finding themselves actually their first point on the day here. Well, at least being able to find that pressure. And they maintain four ults doing it. They don't right. have the convergence just yet, and they don't have to worry about the Tempest. They don't have to worry about snack time from Arya Van. But the downside is, is again, Willow, when she goes up in the air, that's going to be bait for Victor. Wildcard right. is going to be able to hit her, not only because he's hit scan, but one of the interesting things, not only about Willow, I believe Drogas as well, but Barrage will hit you if you're in the air. It will just detonate on right. you while you're up there. So you have to be very careful about where you pop your ult if you are Humeta here. Otherwise, I think they have a really solid chance. I think it's all going to be kind of hinging on this Willow to have that good performance. They haven't been able to find the point presence up to this point. Both teams have decent ultimate utility. Tempest down. Probably not going to be up here for the initial team fight. Pretty standard start here from both teams. All of them trying to find some presence here on the right-hand side up in the church. Dome Shield comes out early on. Delane off to the side on this Leon, doing some great damage, finding the barrack on the backside as well. So that's two now for the Leon. Here's the Enlightenment. Goes into the Con Shields. It does not find the damage they were looking for. You saw the Barrage come out as well, and it's Whitey and the rest of Bust Down coming out on top of that side engagement. But in the meantime, you got Slay on the Inara taking over the point. Seedling's going to be able to get a little bit of damage. Dead Zone stopping Wildcard from getting aggressive. But now he's going to move up. And this is where it's going to be big. I mean, Delane did so much in terms of stalling just there. Right. But really, the rest of the team just has to stand around. They have comeback mechanic enabled. They have the fast cap. They're going to be getting 4% every single tick. But they have to be able to keep that pressure up. You can't just kill them at the beginning of the round and then hope for the best. You have to be able to find them again. Yeah, you got to be careful, Viral. They have the presence. They have the positioning. But just a couple kills here and there. And now Bust Down's flipped it around, and they're back on the point. And now they're going to start zoning again. This is what we've seen time and time again. They they find that point presence. They find the zone. It's a little bit softer of a zone than we've seen throughout the rest of this game. Normally, they're up in that archway, in that entryway to their base. Here comes the Willow ultimate, going to find some flying, going to find some space around the backside of Bust Down. I don't think they know that she's there yet. They will soon. Doing some good damage onto the Grok. The Tempest comes out as a result, and now both teams are going to start fighting each other here. The Tempest does not find a kill, but it does find some damage. Now Leon is getting ganked from the backside. Aryavon finding one as well. Aryavon making it two. 99 is going to become 100. 
and two wins is going to become three here for Bust Down and clean. That is just that is just clean from Bust Down. And I mean, it's exactly what you would kind of expect. I want right. to say in that specific scenario when you have emoji sure. that you probably haven't seen in a while depending on the way scrims are going on console and she's running a loadout that again is a little tampered from the last time i've seen emoji but right. all in on the i'm gonna stay alive like if you shoot me i'm alive if i run i'm alive i have the toot scoot to be able to kind of keep myself alive <laughs> right. like there's nothing that is going to cause me to die right well emoji working out for bust down finding themselves the third win here on the day and finding themselves another win in the Paladins console league. Let's send it back to the desk to break it down. Thanks, guys. Bust down, grab the victory, and now it has put us two sets into our PCL, so we're 50% of the way through. But just to wrap that match up before we start heading into the other side of the North American circuit of things, Bust Down looking very strong here. Yeah, definitely just kind of looking like the better team, no matter where it was, no matter what it was, their champions. Just kind of commanding the map presence. And I think it comes back to some of those plays we saw on Frog Isle. They seem very prepared. Like, they know what they want to do. They know what their, their zone looks like after they win a fight. They know what that fight looked like, and they talked about it. And it's all very laid out and planned. And again, Khan feels like the, the big MVP for this team today, yeah. I thought they played very, very nicely with the character. When a team's that comfortable on a champion, it performs that well. I think looking at the KDA, it was 26 and 4 on the day as far as KD. That's crazy. Uh, not including uh, <laughs> the assist. What do you do? Do you just keep it? Do you try to react to it? Do you ban it out? I, well, I mean, we gave them suggestions, right? But they just kind of, you know, weird draft from Team Viral. I thought the Inara was not as heavy hitting. I don't think Inara's ever quite quite been as heavy hitting as some of the aggro tanks. I like the aggro tanks on console, and again, the second pick, Saris, with so much other stuff open, uh, was a big mistake, and if that's the way you have to draft, that's the way you have to draft. I can't help you any further. First map, uh, first set, we, we saw actually this map be played at a little bit of a slower pace by some of the teams, and then we started to see that pick up from Aaron Ham, and they started to be aggressive, and it was actually the Khan who was on Aaron Ham as well, who helped that aggressiveness kind of be dictated. So it seems like, you know, really the teams that are really opting for that aggressive style seem to be taking a lot of these teams on the back foot. And it's, it's a little bit more difficult to play this kind of hold the point, kind of to slowly build it uh, as some teams might be yeah. comfortable with. It feels like once you know what you're doing and you, and you push it, that is really where you're finding a lot of the success. So let's take a look at the standings, guys. We've wrapped it up. It's Cyclone and Bust Down. As you can see, Bust Down's only loss, I'm sure, has been to Cyclone here. So it's a 4 0 3 1 game differential differential could change just like that and be completely even if bust down are able to 3-0 cyclone it would be eight and eight apiece that is an incredible match definitely coming up soon in the uh, palins console league sets for the future weeks but right now we're going to take a quick break we've got invictus i believe and low-key scheming coming up after this as we take a trip over to north america but don't go anywhere we'll be right back with some more pcl brought to you by skillshot Iris Studios, Evil Mojo, INAP, Steel Series, Respawn. <laughs> 